Hello Taurus. This is your 2016 to 2017 annual forecast. It's an exciting year ahead because we don't have very much in the fixed signs. Now you are a fixed sign Taurus and sometimes as you know you can get a little bit stuck or it takes you a long time to really decide to take a risk or to, to move forward. Uh, sometimes you just rather play it safe. But we've got the really slower moving planets. None of them are in fixed signs. Pluto, Pluto here in your ninth house is in a cardinal sign. Uranus in your twelfth house is also in a cardinal sign. So um, cardinal signs are all about taking action, being a leader, moving ahead. And the mutable signs, we've got Saturn in a mutable sign all year um, in your eighth house. And I would think that um, this Saturn here in your eighth house um, for this, uh, actually in the next two years, Taurus, um, is going to give you an opportunity really to take care of anything to do with your finances. Anything to do with how you organize your finances, how you spend money, how you use resources generally, uh, will all come under some kind of a, a structure, a restructuring. And you may also be looking more seriously at uh, the metaphysical side of life. Um, really, how to make that real, some of you may um, uh, decide that you kind of like want a little bit more proof about uh, the creative force, creation, all these things, um, the things that religion says, but what about what do I feel? And uh, about making that really tangible, practical for you. Um, and many of you may take up astrology or tarot or numerology or do something with psychology, understanding of the mind, um, because of course thoughts are things and they affect our physical body, they affect everything, they create your reality. So uh, Taurus, um, and also we've got uh, immutable, we've got uh, Jupiter here in your fifth house until September. And so Jupiter there in the fifth um, for the first nine months of the year. Uh, Taurus, this is a wonderful time for expanding your own business if you've got your own business. And if you haven't got your own business, this is a wonderful time to start your own business or at least to do something very creative to bring out the child in you. And maybe some of you will be doing something with children and some of you may even be having a child or getting pregnant with that Jupiter in the fifth house until September the 9th. And all the solar eclipses and lunar eclipses this year, none of them are in fixed signs. They're all in the mutable or the cardinal. So what does this mean? Well, my take on it is that you'll have an opportunity to move forward with your life in new ways, to make great strides forward without this sort of fixed feeling like I've got to dig myself into cement. Sometimes Taurus does do that and can get into a rut. The mutable signs are going to ask you to be adaptable, to be more flexible, to try to go with the flow of things and not fight the flow of things and know that everything really is in perfect divine order. Sometimes we don't think it is and we'd like to resist it because we don't like what's happening sometimes. Um, but it's the mutable energies that are very prevalent this year are going to mean that it's going to be very necessary uh, to go with um, the flow of things and not to fight that flow. And I think you'll understand it as the year unfolds. So let me take you through this year with the main points of the news. At the end of the video, I will give you the important dates because many of you asked me for that. So it's coming up at the very end. So on March the 9th, we've got a solar eclipse happening in Pisces. And do keep in mind that the eclipses, because I am going to cover all the eclipses because they're so pa they're powerful portals in the year and they're happening in March and September. But keep in mind that the energy of those eclipses begins often several weeks before and can last for months if not years afterwards. So this new moon solar eclipse happening in your 11th house, new beginnings with friends, an opportunity to build some new social connections, maybe to work in a team with uh, some exciting inspirational people. Some of you may be taking your work out to the masses, to what you do to a much wider audience. This new moon solar eclipse 
will give you an opportunity to do that. On March the 23rd, we've got a lunar eclipse happening in your sixth house here in Libra. So a lunar eclipse, uh, something often comes to fruition at this time. So maybe you've been looking for a job and, ah, finally it happens, or a promotion or some good news there. Um, equally, uh, it, it, something um, may come to a head and you may leave where you are. You may say, oh, well, yes, it's time to leave. Uh, my boss is in my way. Things are not going in a flow and I'm ready for something new and something different. So that's how these eclipses could be playing out in this, these 11th and 6th houses for you um, <clears throat> in the March time. Now one of the big pieces of news this month, uh, this year, is that Mars, planet ruling energy, goes retrograde. Goes retrograde from April the 18th until June the 30th, initially going retrograde in uh, Sagittarius until the end of May. And then for all of June, going retrograde in your seventh house of relationships. So, the first thing I'm going to say to you, Taurus, if you can possibly help it, because whenever Mars goes retrograde, there are certain sort of do's and don'ts. And if it's in your seventh house, I would say, do not start a divorce during Mars retrograde, especially within the seventh. Don't start a fight if you can help it. Don't buy anything mechanical, because Mars rules uh, anything that's got these moving parts in it, and uh, when it goes retrograde, you, you can imagine they're kind of like going backwards. So it's not the best time uh, to start a new project, but it's a great time for refining, renovating, repairing something existing. Initially, it goes through your eighth house, so you may be revising uh, certain things to do with your finances, your money. And when it comes back into this seventh house for the month of June, uh, this is a good time to somehow uh, motor backwards a little bit in relationships. Take um, a side view. Rather than being in the action, you might just want to sort of withdraw a little to observe what's going on. And then um, in July, when it goes forward again, then you can start moving forward with new relationships, new ideas, new projects. Um, between May and October, we've got a square happening between uh, Neptune and Saturn. Um, and this square happening for you between your 8th house and your 11th house here. So whenever there's a square energy happening, um, there's always a sense of things that, whoa, they're not, they're not in harmony. Uh, a square, musically, to me, is... Um, is the seventh chord, is the chord that wants to resolve but isn't quite resolved. Or it's, it can be quite a dissonant uh, chord. Um, so here you may be looking at uh, issues to do with friends. There may be a friend or a, a certain social circle that just evaporates, disappears out of your life. And it's good to just allow it to do so. Because the thing about Neptune is you can't push it. If you make any effort with Neptune, you're on a dead loss because Neptune in Pisces, especially water, it's just like pushing water around. What happens? Yeah, you don't, you don't get anything constructive from it. Uh, and as well, there may be some uh, financial things that maybe need to be let go of so that you can move on in a new way. But there'll certainly be some changes to your finances uh, to in September time, I would have thought. Um, uh, especially because September 1st we've got a uh, new moon solar eclipse happening in Virgo, happening in your fifth house. Wonderful time for new business ideas, wonderful time to do anything creative, anything cultural, anything gamey, having fun, playing, hobbies, anything pleasurable. This is really new beginnings and new beginnings for business for those of you that want it again around September time. And the other very big news of the year is that Jupiter, on September the 10th, changes sign, goes into Libra, into your sixth house, where Jupiter will stay until October the 10th of 2017, so a year and a month. Uh, and Jupiter in your sixth house, well, wherever Jupiter goes, it brings good fortune and also magnifies things. Sometimes Jupiter in the sixth can mean you put on weight. 
you enjoy eating, but equally it can mean that you say, yes, I'm going to really take care of my physical health. And there can be some real wonderful healing taking place for you as well with that Jupiter energy. There could be some good news of more work coming in for you, some extra work, some promotions, some new work, something good happening often in the workplace with Jupiter there in that sixth house. On September the 16th, we've got a lunar eclipse happening again in this 11th house. So there'll be March and September where you'll get this focus around your friends, the people you have around you. Are they the people that are nourishing, building, that you feel great around? Or maybe you'd be better off on your own rather than those particular friends. But it'd be an opportunity to look at the people you uh, have around you and also to reach out to more people in your life. To really reach out to uh, the many rather than the few. This will be an opportunity and the eclipse may show you. You may, even some of you may go through a lonely time saying, oh, I really don't have friends, uh, the kind that I want. And the eclipse may shine a light on that for you so that you move into a direction where you can create the kinds of friendships that you'd like to have. Uh, June and July, we've got a glorious trine happening between uh, Jupiter and Pluto. Jupiter and Pluto, oh, trine energy, lovely. Um, Jupiter and Pluto, uh, very powerful planets. I mean, for example, Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, they have them conjunct in their charts. So, uh, and a, a trine is a great aspect. I've seen people make a lot of money. I've seen people have great fortune. So this is happening exactly in June and July. And you may have some fortune happening with your career. Um, you may also meet somebody from overseas that's very powerful, that could be very helpful in your life or have a really transformative effect on you in some way. And it could also be again to do with your health and healing you and bringing your energies up to a really higher vibration. And um, finally in December we've got a lovely trine happening, another trine between Saturn and Uranus. Yippee! So um, this now could be some good news about your finances. Some good news uh, happening for you on your spiritual path, your spiritual journey, some kind of an awakening, something really that is very fulfilling for you and it's also very practical. Yes, Taurus, you like things that are practical, that are usable, not something that's just pie in the sky. So as you can see, it's going to be a very busy year ahead. Um, you're going to be focusing a lot with your friendships, your work, travel, money, relationships, own business. It's all there. So um, I wish you a wonderful year ahead. For those of you that would like a personal reading where I look at your chart and um, what the uh, aspects are showing for you, of course I'd be delighted to hear from you. And thank you for commenting, for sharing, for being with me all during the year. For those of you who follow me, I'm so appreciative of you and I'm sending you really lots and lots of love. Bye for now.